the reason that the ships from Earth stopped coming could be World War III, or it could be due to a slow decline of civilization. Have you ever thought about why astronauts haven't visited the moon for more than 50 years? It's been over half a century since Neil Armstrong's famous walk, and we still haven't gone back. Why did the moon mission stop? Despite all the advancements in technology, why hasn't NASA revisited our nearest celestial neighbor in decades? Join us as we uncover how NASA has finally admitted to something huge about its moon missions and why nobody is talking about it. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. In 1969, Neil Armstrong made history by being the first person to go to the moon. He famously said, that's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Since then, 11 others have followed in his footsteps through the Apollo program. However, it's been over 50 years since anyone has walked on the moon. Despite the success of the Apollo missions, they were short visits, and we haven't established a permanent human presence there. Nevertheless, there are many good reasons to go back to the moon and stay for longer. NASA plans to send U.S. astronauts back to the moon, possibly by 2025, in a program called Artemis. This mission will also mark the first time a woman will set foot on the lunar surface. Who would have thought that after the incredible moon landing, humans wouldn't go back to the moon for many years? With all the amazing progress in science and technology, it seemed like a sure thing that we'd be back there in no time. So why didn't it happen? As the years went by, the world changed, and so did the space industry. The competition between the US and Russia, known as the space race, was one of the most famous rivalries ever. Each side tried to beat the other in technology and military power. It was an exciting time to be alive, especially for space enthusiasts, as the two superpowers battled it out in space. But as tensions between the US and the Soviet Union grew, events like the Berlin Wall and the Cuban Missile Crisis made the stakes even higher in the space race. Now imagine the world back in 1957. The coolest gadgets were black and white TVs and transistor radios. But then, on October 4th of that year, the Soviet Union launched Sputnik, the first artificial satellite ever, into space. This was a big deal. It woke up the United States because it meant the Soviet Union was ahead in technology and maybe even military power. People were amazed by Sputnik, but they were also scared. They realized that if the Soviet Union could put a satellite in space, they might also be able to launch a nuclear attack from there. So the United States decided to act. They launched their satellite, Explorer 1, and created NASA, the agency in charge of space exploration. But alongside NASA, there were also two other programs focused on national security, trying to gather information about the Soviet Union and its friends. This turned the race to space into a big part of the Cold War. Both countries wanted to be the best and beat the other. But the Soviet Union wasn't stopping. In 1959, they landed the first space probe on the moon, called Luna 2. Then, in 1961, Yuri Gagarin became the first person to orbit the Earth in a spacecraft called Vostok 1. This was a tough moment for the United States. They responded with Project Mercury, sending a smaller spacecraft with chimpanzees to test it. Alan Shepard became the first American in space in May 1961, but the Soviets were still ahead. It wasn't until President John F. Kennedy said in May 1961 that the U.S. would land a person on the moon by the end of the decade that NASA focused on it. John Glenn became the first American to orbit Earth in 1962, and by the end of the year, NASA was laying the groundwork for the lunar landing program. Even though Project Apollo, NASA's mission to the moon, is seen as a huge achievement, there were problems along the way. In 1967, three astronauts tragically died during a launch simulation. In December 1968, while the Soviet Union was deciding whether they needed to send people to the moon and mourning the loss of their top engineer, the United States was charging ahead with their space missions. Apollo 8 made history as the first manned spaceship to orbit the moon, paving the way for the monumental launch of Apollo 11 in July 1969. This mission, led by astronauts Neil Armstrong, 
Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins, marked humanity's first steps on the lunar surface, with Armstrong famously becoming the first person to set foot on the moon. This achievement, once believed to be impossible, firmly established America as the leader in the space race. Meanwhile, the Soviet Union was struggling to launch its lunar spacecraft. They faced numerous setbacks, including a tragic explosion in 1969. Despite their efforts, they couldn't match the success of the American missions. Throughout this intense competition, the American public was captivated by the developments in space exploration. Television played a significant role, bringing the excitement of space travel into homes across the nation. Astronauts emerged as national heroes, and ordinary Americans eagerly followed their every move. In contrast, the Soviet Union was often portrayed as the antagonist, as they relentlessly pursued to showcase the strength of communism through their space program. In 1975, a significant event occurred in space. Three American astronauts embarked on a journey in an Apollo spacecraft. Their mission is to meet up with a Soviet-made Soyuz vehicle orbiting in space. When the commanders of the two ships finally met, it marked a crucial moment. It symbolized a gradual improvement in the relationship between the United States and the Soviet Union during the latter part of the Cold War. This event reshaped the space race dramatically. The two superpowers began to explore different paths in their pursuit of space exploration. However, despite these promising beginnings, NASA's dreams of returning to the moon faced numerous obstacles. Financial constraints emerged as a major hurdle in the quest for space exploration, particularly when it involved human missions. NASA's endeavors encompass a wide range of ambitious projects, such as the James Webb Space Telescope, the Space Launch System, and missions to various celestial bodies like the Sun, Jupiter, Mars, the Asteroid Belt, the Kuiper Belt, and even the edge of the Solar System. However, executing these projects comes with a hefty price tag. In 2022, NASA's budget stood at $24 billion, with the Biden administration aiming to increase it to nearly $26 billion in the 2023 budget. Despite this apparent increase, the allocation for each of NASA's divisions remains limited, leaving little room for additional programs. In stark contrast, the U.S. military is allocated a staggering budget of $858 billion in 2023, dwarfing NASA's relatively modest allocation. This budget allocation trend for NASA is a far cry from its heyday. In 1965, NASA received a significant portion, 4%, of the federal budget. However, over the past four decades, this allocation has dwindled, currently accounting for only 0.4% of the federal budget. This downward trend in funding poses significant challenges for NASA's ambitious goals. For instance, in today's world, the cost of sending a manned mission to the moon is estimated to be around $104 billion over 13 years, adjusted for inflation. This amount is staggering, especially when compared to the $142 billion cost of the Apollo program in today's currency. The exorbitant cost associated with manned space travel makes it difficult to garner political support. Many argue that NASA's current budget is simply insufficient to cover the expenses of lunar missions. A former astronaut even criticized NASA's budget, stating that it falls short of meeting the requirements for a lunar mission. Jim Bridenstine, who was in charge of NASA during the Trump administration, mentioned that the United States could have reached the moon and even Mars sooner if it weren't for political concerns rather than scientific or technological obstacles. In a 2018 conversation with reporters, Bridenstine emphasized that politics, not the lack of scientific or technological capabilities, have been the primary hindrance to progress in space exploration. He expressed confidence that without political barriers, the United States would have already established a presence on the moon and might have advanced to Mars by now. When talking about exploring space, American politics can present significant challenges. Take, for example, President Biden's situation. He may not even hold office when NASA eventually sends astronauts back to the moon, possibly in 2025 or later.
it becomes complicated to depend on the promises of a leader who won't witness the project's completion. The process of designing, building, and testing a spacecraft capable of carrying humans to another planet is lengthy. It extends far beyond the tenure of a single presidency. Regrettably, incoming presidents and legislators often discard the space priorities set by their predecessors. This tendency can lead to substantial delays and setbacks. For instance, in 2004, the Bush administration assigned NASA the mission of replacing the space shuttle and returning to the moon. NASA devised the Constellation program, intending to utilize an Ares rocket and an Orion spaceship to land astronauts on the moon. However, the program was eventually abandoned, leaving NASA without a clear trajectory forward. NASA put a huge amount of money, $9 billion, into a program called Constellation. This program wanted to send astronauts back to the moon, but when President Obama took over, he questioned if the program was possible and if it was worth the money. In the end, he stopped the Constellation program. Instead, he brought in the SLS rocket. Later, President Trump kept going with the SLS rocket, but he changed the goal. He wanted to focus on going to the moon and Mars. He hoped to land astronauts on the moon by 2024 with the Artemis program. All these changes in NASA's plans meant they lost a lot of money and time. It also slowed down their progress. Surprisingly, President Biden hasn't changed the Artemis program or the Space Force. This makes him different from other presidents who usually change space plans when they take over. Buzz Aldrin suggests that America can overcome its political deadlock in space exploration by implementing long-term leadership commitments akin to those seen during the Apollo program. He emphasizes the importance of Congress and the administration working together to provide sustained guidance and support. Additionally, Aldrin stresses the significant role of the American public in shaping space policy by electing officials who prioritize space exploration. Despite some lukewarm public interest in lunar exploration, with only 53% of Americans considering the Apollo program worthwhile, there is a growing consensus that returning to the moon should be a top priority for NASA. However, opinions on sending humans back vary, with only 38% in favor, while others advocate for robotic missions. On the other hand, Mars exploration enjoys more widespread support, with 63% of respondents in a Pew Research Center poll prioritizing it as a NASA goal. Furthermore, there is overwhelming public support, with 91% of Americans believing that scanning the skies for potentially hazardous asteroids is more crucial than revisiting the moon. This highlights a shift in priorities and underscores the need for NASA's agenda to align with public sentiment. The Space Launch System SLS is a pivotal player in space exploration. This remarkable rocket represents a pinnacle of engineering prowess boasting unparalleled size and power, surpassing even the iconic Saturn V rocket from the Apollo era, the SLS promises to revolutionize space travel with its unprecedented capabilities. The Saturn V, with its five engines, generated an astounding 7.5 million pounds of thrust during its historic launches. Over five years, nine Saturn V rockets successfully propelled astronauts toward the moon marking a monumental achievement in human history. However, the SLS surpasses its predecessor in both scale and ambition. Designed to accommodate a larger crew capsule and various payloads, the SLS is integral to NASA's ambitious return to the moon program. This initiative aims not only to facilitate longer lunar surface exploration, but also to lay the groundwork for establishing a permanent human presence on the lunar frontier. For a while now, scientists and business folks have been really into the idea of setting up a basic living spot on the moon. They call it a Luna space station. They think the next smart move is to have a permanent place where humans can research the moon. It's not that far away. Just three days travel. Chris Hadfield, who used to be an astronaut, said we can't mess this up because people's lives are at stake. There's a bunch of stuff we need to invent and test before we can go further out into space. This moon base could become a place where spaceships stop to refuel before heading off into deep space. 
it might also lead to building awesome space telescopes that we've never seen before. Living on Mars could get a lot easier too. We might finally figure out some big mysteries about how the moon and Earth came to be. Maybe we could even start making money by letting people take trips to the moon. But lots of astronauts and experts say the hardest part about making all this happen isn't some big, exciting challenge. It's pretty boring and kind of sad. NASA views the moon as an ideal training ground for future missions to Mars, as it provides valuable lessons for living in space. The Space Launch System SLS holds great promise, but its history has been challenging, and its future is uncertain. A report from NASA's Office of the Inspector General in 2021 revealed that constructing a new rocket for moon missions has taken 18 years and cost $23 billion from 2012 to 2022. Each launch using this system comes with a hefty price tag of $4.1 billion. The Inspector General cautioned that relying on such an expensive rocket, which can only be used once, could hinder NASA's ability to accomplish its long-term exploration objectives. This warning is crucial, especially considering the competition from private companies like SpaceX, which are striving to lower launch costs and reuse boosters safely. Unlike the SLS, which is discarded after a single use, SpaceX has demonstrated success in landing and reusing its boosters. The tale of the space launch system began when former U.S. President George W. Bush declared the end of the space shuttle fleet on January 14, 2004. This choice opened doors for a fresh era in space exploration. The replacement was planned to be a strong heavy lift rocket and crew capsule capable of going to the moon and Mars. Despite some doubting it was just a political move in an election year, President Bush stayed firm in his commitment to the plan. Money was secured for the development of the Ares V moon rocket. What made this rocket different was its use of ready-made parts, unlike the Saturn V, which was entirely built from scratch. The main part of the Ares V, acting as its base, was designed to be powered by six RS-68 engines, the same engines used by the Delta I for rocket in the private sector. Also, the Ares V included two solid rocket boosters from the space shuttle program placed on each side to give more thrust. The second part of the rocket, sitting on top of the first, was a big improvement from the Saturn V's second part. It was redesigned and improved to boost its performance and abilities. This careful planning and use of proven technologies were meant to ensure the reliability and success of the Space Launch System. The start of the Space Launch System can be traced back to a crucial moment in history when the call was made to retire the space shuttle fleet. Despite some skepticism, this decision ultimately led to the development of a new generation of rockets and spacecraft able to explore beyond Earth's orbit. President Bush's strong determination and vision in supporting this effort laid the groundwork for a new era in space exploration. After the main part of the rocket ran out of fuel, it would be thrown away, and then the Orion capsule would take charge and continue the mission to the moon. President Bush suggested allocating $11 billion from NASA's total budget of $86 billion over five years for the Constellation program. However, things didn't go as planned. By the end of the Bush administration, the Constellation program was significantly delayed and over budget. NASA estimated the cost of returning to the moon and going to Mars by 2025 to be $230 billion. President Obama canceled the Constellation program and replaced it with the SLS, which promised a practical approach and cost reduction. This led to a major redesign of the SLS, including using proven technology from the Delta V and repurposing engines from the retired space shuttle. However, repurposing these engines for the SLS has proven challenging, causing delays and test cancellations due to issues with fueling. The SLS requires extremely cold hydrogen and oxygen for optimal performance, which poses unique engineering challenges. Despite numerous tests, the rocket's development has been plagued by difficulties, including problems with the engines. Moreover, besides political factors, the moon itself presents challenges for human exploration. 
Its surface is hazardous, with craters and rocks posing risks to safe landings. The moon's regolith or dust is another concern as it can interfere with equipment and spacesuits. Despite these challenges, the moon's proximity to Earth offers opportunities for learning how to live beyond our planet. NASA is working on solutions like fission power systems to provide electricity during lunar nights, which last about 14 days. However, there are still doubts about the readiness of spacesuits and rovers for lunar missions. Additionally, there's a need for more young people interested in space exploration to keep innovation alive. Private companies like SpaceX and Blue Origin play a significant role in driving innovation and reducing costs in spaceflight. They envision a future where the moon is part of our everyday economy and affordable lunar visits are possible. Astronauts are confident that humanity will eventually return to the moon and reach Mars. It's just a matter of time. What do you think about this thrilling period of space exploration that nobody is talking about? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you are still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more quality content.